Hello there. My name is Yi. I'm a software engineer on the Android Studio team. In this session, I'll share how to accurately measure your app's performance using profilable builds. When an app has poor performance, such as animation jank, frozen frames, and high memory usage, it negatively impacts user experience. And to fix these performance issues, we first need the right tools to measure them. This is where profiling comes in. Profiling helps you find where CPU cycles and memory are spent at the in time of inspection. Android Studio offers a suite of profilers to help with the inspection. When working with profilers, there are some things to keep in mind. Historically, profiling in an Android app requires a debug build. As Android developers, you are most likely familiar with the debug and release build variants, which are automatically created by Android Studio. The debug build allows you to use features useful for development, like apply changes, working with the debugger or the database inspector. In addition, it also enables profiling tools to inspect the state of a running app unavailable to the release build. Under the hood, the debug build sets the debuggable flag in the Android manifest to true. While useful, the debug build is meant to provide more information at the cost of performance. That's because when debuggable is true, a lot of compiler optimizations are turned off. Let me show you the performance difference. To visualize the frame rendering time, I turn on profile GPU rendering and developer options. Each vertical bar on the bottom of the screen represents how long each frame takes to render. So the shorter these bars are, the smoother the animation is. Here's a screen recording showing you the same app running on the same device. The left-hand side is on the debug build, the right-hand side a release build. As you can see, the debug version has more stuttering frames, also known as UI jank. This means when you profile the debug build, you may see timing measurements significantly different from what your users see in the release build, and you may end up optimizing something that is not the problem in the end. To address that issue, the Android platform introduced a tag called Profilable. It enables many profiling tools that measure timing information without the performance overhead of the debug build. Profilable is available on devices running Android 10 or higher. Let's look at another screen recording. This time, the left side shows a profilable release app, and the right side an unmodified release app. There's little performance difference between the two. With the profilable, you can now measure the timing information much more accurately than the debug build. The feature is designed to be used in production where app security is paramount. So we decided to only support profiling features such as call stack sampling and system trace, where timing measurement is critical. The memory profiler only supports native memory profiling. The energy profiler and event timeline are not supported. All these restrictions are put in place to keep your app's data safe. Now that you know what Profilable Tag does, let me show you how to use it. There are two options, automatically and manually. First, automatically with Android Studio. With Android Studio Flamingo and Android Gradle Plugin 8.0, all you need to do is just select the option from the Profile drop-down menu in the Run toolbar, Profile with Low Overhead. Then, Android Studio will automatically build a profilable app of your current build type and attach the profiler. It works for any build type, but we highly recommend you to profile a release build, which is what your users see. Notice when a profilable app is being profiled, there is a visual indicator along with the banner message. Only the CPU and memory profiler is available, as I mentioned earlier. And in the memory profiler, only the native allocation recording feature is available due to security reasons. This feature is great for simplifying the process of local profiling, but it only applies when you profile with Android Studio. Therefore, it can still be beneficial to manually configure your app in case you want to diagnose performance issues in production or if you're not ready to use the latest Android Studio or Android Gradle plugin yet. So here's the second option, manual configuration. It takes four steps to manually enable Profilable. First, add this line to your Android manifest.xml. Then, switch to the release build type or any build type that's not debuggable. Third step, make sure you have a signing key configured. To prevent compromising your release signing key, you can temporarily use your debug signing key or configure a new key just for profiling. Finally, build and run the app on a device running Android 10 or higher, and now you have a profilable app. 
You can then attach the Android Studio Profiler by launching the Profiler Tool window and selecting the app process from the drop-down list. Many of you may wonder if it is safe to leave the Profilable Manifest tag in production, and the answer is yes. This tag is designed to be usable in release builds to enable local profiling. No memory data is readable by the host profiling tools and the shell process. Only stack traces are readable, which are typically obfuscated or lacking symbols in release builds. And that's it. We've shown you that profiling the debug build may skew performance, and therefore it's better to analyze the release build with the profilable tag enabled. In summary, the release build is for production. A profilable release build is ideal for profiling CPU timing, and the debug build is for the other tasks. To learn more about profilable builds, start by reading the documentation in the Android Manifest section and the Android Studio Guides. You can also find these links in the description below. With these tools provided by the Android team, we hope you can make your app run faster and smoother. Thank you.